Thank you, Kian Corla. Uh, before I begin, Kian Corla, as this is my first statement to the House, I would like to extend my profound thanks and gratitude to the people of Dublin North for their support in the general election and for the trust they have placed in me. I will endeavour to repay that trust during the lifetime of this 31st of. I have chosen the issue of suicide prevention to make my maiden speech to this House, as I strongly believe, as I know all in this House do, that the task of suicide prevention needs increased attention from all sections in our society, including all in this House. Now, first of all, I would like to um, wish my party colleague, uh, Deputy Kathleen Lynch, well in her work ahead. I want to thank her for a comprehensive introduction to today's debate, which she delivered this day last week. And I also would like to acknowledge the work of Deputy Dan Neville in this area, and also the work of the previous Minister, John Maloney, who did great work in this area, and I saw it at first hand uh, in the last Shannon. Suicide, uh, uh, Corla, has for too long dwelled at the very edges of our national comfort zone. I be believe we are on the verge of changing our approach to this entire issue, and I know it is a priority of this Government to fundamentally improve how we tackle the issue of suicide and suicide prevention. There is no doubt we are currently experiencing an emergency in relation to suicide. Between now and when we sit in this chamber next Thursday, a further 10 people will have lost their lives to suicide in this country. 10 people a week, more than one person every day, this I'm sure you will all agree is a shocking figure, a shocking statistic. Even more worrying is the belief that this figure is likely to remain this high, if not even higher given the hardship placed on so many of our citizens by the recent economic crisis. It remains true that many instances of suicide occur in people with no previous history of mental illness or depression. Rather, it may be the circumstances of life that conspire to leave people in such a distressed state that suicide becomes the best option that they can see. The loss of one's job, the breakdown of a relationship, sudden separation from family or circle of friends, and other related factors can all lead a person on a path where suicide <coughs> is contemplated. We need to arrest the rise in suicides now. In the limited time I have here, I would like to discuss just three possible areas where I think this government's suicide prevention strategy can focus. Primary care within the community, raising awareness among children, and especially teenagers, uh, through direct education in schools and tackling the stigmatisation of suicide. In relation to primary care within the community, it is vital as set out in the programme for government that we ensure people have access to psycholo psychologists and counsellors in the primary care setting. This will require strengthening the services offered in GP surgeries and local clinics throughout the state. Modernising and improving our health service in the local communities will be the front line in our suicide prevention strategy. The deconstruction of the old system of acute cases being sent to asylum era institutions such as St. Eta's in Port Ran, in my own constituency of Dublin North, needs to be accelerated. It will be a priority of mine during the lifetime of this government to make sure that ministers stick to their promises in this regard, and I believe that they will. I know Minister Kathleen Lynch will drive this agenda on. It is also vital that we <coughs> harness and support the important work done by voluntary organisations such as PA The Health. In the short lifespan of five years, Pieta House has counselled over 3,000 people who are struggling with suicidal thoughts. Pieta House is just one of many organisations voluntarily providing care to people suffering with suicidal thoughts. We need to include such organisations within our suicide prevention strategy in order to create a joined up plan for harnessing the care and compassion these organisations provide. In relation to education, there must be a commitment from this government to deliver on the education of young people on the issues of suicide awareness. Schools can play a key role in this regard. There are a number of initiatives we could implement in the short term to raise awareness and provide a support structure within our schools for students who may be at risk of suicide. One minute. These would include curriculum-based presentations to students, self-reporting for students and school-wide screening for identification of at-risk individuals. Teachers can play a role, but they must be provided with adequate skills and therefore must be increased in-service training for primary and post-primary teachers on suicide prevention. It may be asking a lot of teachers to spot every behavioural characteristic of every student. However, if we give our teachers a better chance of identifying a potential child at risk through improved training, then we will save lives. In relation to destigmatising suicide, we need a change of culture around suicide. 
we need to treat suicide with care, understanding and support. For too long, suicide has been a dirty word in Ireland, a cause of shame, when it should be a cause for empathy and compassion. Our local and national media outlets will have a responsibility in this regard to report on suicide with due understanding and intelligence. I must com commend the national campaigns launched by the National Office for Suicide Prevention, including some very powerful national ad advertising aimed at young people and the development of the Let Someone Know.ie website. Sorry, Deputy, your time is...